Elon Musk, or commonly referred to as the real-life Tony Stark. Genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. Controversially brilliant, love him or hate him, he's undeniably a genius. Go yourself. From co-founding the most used cash transfer app PayPal, to building the world's largest electric car company Tesla, to even inventing the first ever reusable rocket, he will go down in history for his contribution to humanity's progress. But it's his latest venture which has gotten everyone talking. The Neuralink company. By Neuralink. The Neuralink. The Neuralink. The Neuralink. The Neuralink chip. Neuralink is his biotech startup on a mission to build an implantable brain computer interface to revolutionize both modern medicine and communication. And guess what? They just successfully completed their first human trial. This is a story of how Elon's Neuralink works and how it's just changed humanity forever. When most people think of brain computer interfaces, they disregard it as science fiction, stuff that won't happen in our lifetime. You might perhaps think of the Matrix and Neo plugging himself into the simulation, or Avatar's Jake Sully seamlessly merging his consciousness with the Navi. It feels like a distant future, right? But what if I told you this future is closer than we think? Put simply, a brain computer interface is a direct link between your brain and a computer. It allows you to control devices just by thinking or communicate with just your mind. But that sounds like magic, right? Telepathy or telekinesis. Well, it was Arthur C. Clark that said any significantly advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Generally, brain computer interfaces connect to the brain in one of two ways. Either a wearable device, like a cap with a couple sensors that sits on the head, and this is how a doctor can measure your brain activity using an EEG, or a surgically implanted device that sits directly on the brain tissue. And so sorry to disappoint Zuck, but we're going to be focusing on implantable BCIs today, and not what you and Meta are working on. I, I think the, the one that we're working on is basically a wristband. Elon's Neuralink is an example of an implantable BCI, or or as he likes to refer to it. In a lot of ways, it's kind of like a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. Neuralink's implant is basically the size of a 50 pence piece with 1,024 electrodes, all smaller than the human hair, inserted into the brain to record neural activity. The procedure is so precise and complex that Neuralink actually developed their own robot to carry out the task. The robot creates a 3D map of the brain, allowing the surgeon to accurately place the hair-like threads into the brain. And I know what you're probably thinking, robots building robots. That's definitely not been done before, right? Neuralink's implant has already been shown to demonstrate its use to stimulate movement in pigs and get monkeys to play Pong with their mind, though I'm not sure Peppa Pig will be signing up anytime soon. So what's the goal of all of this? Well, here's Elon to explain. Pretty basic. It'll be about restoring functionality to people who've lost their connection between their, their brain and their body. So you can imagine like if, say, Stephen Hawking could talk or communicate as fast as somebody with a fully functioning body. That would be amazing. So that's like the what we're trying to do. That, that's our first application is to restore functionality to quadriplegics, tetraplegics, and, and people who have just for whatever reason no longer have a connection between, limited connection between their brain and their body. But how does he intend on turning his vision into reality? Well, let's explore this and how he potentially could have transformed the life of someone like Stephen Hawking. The human brain is complex and we can simplify the way we move into the following process. Our upper motor neurons in the brain send signals towards lower motor neurons in the body to cause our muscles to contract and then move. And FYI, a neuron is just a cell that carries messages to our body. Let's take this cartoon cutout of Zuck to demonstrate. After a long busy day, Zuck gets home and wants to play with his Apple Vision Pro. His pre-motor system fires up, which plans and coordinates his movement to pick up his headset. His primary motor cortex then signals down towards his spine, where nerves then send signals to his muscles to contract, which ultimately results and him picking up his Apple Vision Pro and putting it on. The whole reason a brain-computer interface works at all is because every time we move, feel, or remember something, our neurons are at work. And that work is carried out by small electrical signals that zip from neuron to neuron. And scientists can detect the signals and interpret what they mean. But what happens when someone loses their ability to function properly? Let's take Stephen Hawking as an example, where he had a condition called amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, a type of motor neuron disease. This just means that there are problems with the neurons and the brain can no longer communicate properly with the body. But just because there's dysregulation in the pathway stopping the brain from controlling the body, it doesn't mean there still is an activity in the brain. We can find these patterns that reflect what motion someone is thinking of doing, even if a person is paralyzed. This isn't science fiction. BCIs have already demonstrated that they can bypass these damaged pathways in the neural circuit by establishing a direct line of communication between the brain and external devices. For example, paralyzed volunteers have been asked to imagine making hand movements and by decoding their neural signals in real time, implants can then let them control a cursor on a screen, pick letters 
letters from a keyboard, play video games, or even control a robotic arm, all with just their mind. But here's the next step in Elon's mission. In principle, fix almost anything that is wrong with the brain. It could uh, restore limb functionality, so if you've got an interface into the motor cortex and then an implant that's, uh, say, that's like a microcontroller in your muscle groups, you could then create a neural shunt that restores somebody who is a quadriplegic to full functionality. Like they can walk around, be normal. So other than Elon being a straight marketing genius, why has everyone recently begun talking about Neuralink? Well, it's because the company just announced their first step to change humanity forever. Here's a quick breakdown of the Neuralink timeline to get you up to speed. At the beginning of 2022, the FDA denied Neuralink's request to fast track human trials. Then in May 2022, the FDA approved Neuralink as an investigational device exemption, which allows the device to be used for clinical studies, but isn't the same as approval. A year later, on the 26th of May 2023, Neuralink received FDA clearance for its first in-human clinical trial, which was a controversial decision at the time after Neuralink employees had said that the company was rushing surgeries on monkeys, pigs, and sheep. On September 2023, Neuralink then began recruiting trial participants for its prime study, which aims to study the safety of its implant and surgical robot. And then earlier this year, on the 29th of January 2024, Elon tweeted this. The first human received an implant from Neuralink yesterday and is recovering well. Initial results show promising neuron spike detection. Then three weeks later, on the 20th of February, Elon said this in a conversation on X. Patient seems to have made a full recovery uh, with neural effects that we're aware of and is able to control the mouse move the mouse around the screen just by thinking. This timeline of events will go down in history to have changed humanity forever. Elon's vision for Neuralink can be summed up in his own words as a backup drive for your non-physical being, your digital soul. It sounds like something straight out of Black Mirror, right? Elon's ultimate goal is to create a general population device that can directly link human minds to supercomputers, potentially bridging the gap with artificial intelligence, or as he likes to say, symbiosis. AI symbiosis, you'll probably want to do something like that. Basically, his argument is sentient AI is posing an existential threat to humanity. We can either ignore it and get left behind, or worst case scenario, end up getting destroyed. So his theory is we can mitigate the threat of a hypothetical AI dictator by developing an interface that connects the human brains to AI. So what does this actually mean for humanity? Well, ever seen I Am Legend, where Will Smith is fighting in a zombie apocalypse because of a cancer vaccine that created a global outbreak? What I'm getting at is the long-term impact of brain-computer interface technology on the human body remains uncertain and unknown. Now, I'm not saying everyone's going to turn into zombies, but perhaps maybe a future more like Wally. -E. Here's my take on what this future could look like. As with all innovations, we have both the dystopian and utopian outlooks. Let's start with the dystopian, and this is where it gets really Black Mirror. The ability to link minds together could lead to a world where there isn't any privacy of thought anymore. Governments or big corporations, BlackRock comes to mind, could explore this technology to manipulate opinions and even control behavior, leading to an Orwellian surveillance state where private thoughts are no longer private. Additionally, if we have a computer in our brain, hackers could hack into our computer and could potentially access and manipulate memories, thoughts, and even control our actions. My personal least favorite is the homogenization of thoughts. The widespread adoption of such tech could lead to the homogenization of culture as direct brain-to-brain -brain communication and AI interfaces standardize interpretations and reactions to experiences. It diminishes individuality and cultural diversity. The race for cognitive enhancements could lead to ethical dilemmas where the line between human and machine blurs. It raises the questions around what it means to be human and what is the value of natural human experiences. But then again, if we can get this technology right, Right. there are some really hopeful and transformative utopian possibilities. The biggest one is enhanced empathy and understanding. A direct mind-to-mind -mind communication fosters a deep understanding and empathy amongst people, transcending language barriers and cultural differences. This could lead to global peace where conflicts are resolved because of mutual understanding rather than violence. Additionally, imagine the ability to share experience and knowledge directly from your brain. It revolutionizes education and learning. People can learn new languages, skills, or subjects almost instantaneously. It will be just like downloading a new skill set. And then imagine people augmenting their cognitive abilities, including memory, calculation, creativity, enabling humanity to solve the most complex problems more efficiently. It's going to lead to massive advancements in science and tech, 
which propels humanity and civilization into the stars. The future is definitely uncertain, but this conversation is vital to spark deliberate and thoughtful approaches to be taken. Humanity must be guided by our ethical compass, a future where brain computer interfaces elevate human potential, all whilst upholding the fundamental values and principle that underpin humanity. And perhaps we should take some learnings from our dystopian sci-fi failures just to avoid them. I hope you've enjoyed this documentary and please make sure you subscribe to the channel. You can watch my latest video on how Intel has just solved the deepfake problem with their tool that can detect microscopic changes in blood flow in images and videos. Until next time and see you soon.